Number 10 Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure In the small town of San Dimas, a few miles away from Los Angeles, there are two nearly brain-dead teenage boys going by the names of Bill S., Preston, Esk, and Ted Theodore Logan. They have a dream together of starting their own rock and roll band called the Wild Stalins, unfortunately. They are still in high school and on the verge of failing out of their school as well, and if they do not pass their upcoming history report, they will be separated as a result of Ted's father sending him to military school. But what Bill and Ted do not know is that they must stay together to save the future. So, a man from the future named Rufus came to help them pass their report. So, both Bill and Ted decided to gather up historical figures which they need for their report. They are hoping that this will help them pass their report so they can stay together. Number 9 River's Edge A group of high school friends must come to terms with the fact that one of them, Samson, killed another, Jamie. Reactions vary, as Lane is intent on protecting Samson and smuggling him out of the state, while others think it's best to go to the police. Matt's tough little brother also finds out about the body, and no one knows quite how the police will learn about the murder or who will be blamed for it. Number 8 A Scanner Darkly In a totalitarian society in a near future, the undercover detective Bob Arctor is working with a small-time group of drug users trying to reach the big distributors of a brain-damaging drug called Substance D. His assignment is promoted by the recovery center New Path Corporation. And when Bob begins to lose his own identity and have schizophrenic behavior, he is submitted to tests to check his mental conditions. Number 7. Constantine John Constantine is approached by Det, Angela Dodson, who needs his help to prove that her twin sister Isabel's death was not a suicide. The dead woman was a devout Catholic, and Angela refuses to accept she would have taken her own life. She's asked Constantine for help because he has a reputation for dealing with the mystical. In fact, he is a demon hunter whose sole purpose on earth is to send demons back to the nether regions. John himself has been to hell and knows that he is destined to return there on his death but hopes his good deeds may find him a place in heaven, as he looks into Isabel's death. He realizes demons are trying to break through to the human world, and his battles lead him into a direct conflict with Satan. Number 6. My Own Private Idaho Mike Waters lives on the street and befriends the somewhat older and streetwise Scott Favor, who shows him what is necessary to survive. Waters suffers from narcolepsy and can fall asleep at any moment and in almost any circumstance. Favor comes from a rich family and is rebelling against his own background. They travel together extensively. Waters is driven by the need to find his biological mother and spend time in Italy. Later in life, however, Favor has joined mainstream society and has little time for his old friend. Number 5 Point Break In Los Angeles, California, a gang of bank robbers call themselves the ex-presidents, commit their crimes while wearing masks of ex-presidents Reagan, Carter, Nixon, and Johnson. The FBI believes that the members of the gang could be surfers, and send young agent Johnny Utah undercover at the beach to mix with the surfers and gather information. Utah meets surfer Bodie and gets drawn into the lifestyle of his new friend. Number 4. Speed When a young Los Angeles police department Special Weapons and Tactics SWAT officer called Jack Traven Angers retired Atlanta Police Department bomb squad member Howard Payne by foiling his attempt at taking hostages stuck in an elevator with a bomb. Payne, in retaliation, arms a bus with a bomb that will explode if it drops below 50 miles per hour. With the help of spunky passenger Annie, Jack and his partner, Detective Harry Temple, try to save the people on the bus before the bomb goes off while also trying to figure out how Payne is monitoring them. Number 3 John Wick With the untimely death of his beloved wife still bitter in his mouth, John Wick, the expert former assassin, receives one final gift from her a precious keepsake to help John find a new meaning in life now that she is gone. But when the arrogant Russian mob prince, Isf Tarasov, and his men pay Wick a rather unwelcome visit to rob him of his prized 1969 Mustang and his wife's present. The legendary hitman will be forced to unearth his meticulously concealed identity. Blind with revenge, John will immediately unleash a carefully orchestrated maelstrom of destruction against the sophisticated kingpin, 
Vigo Tarasov and his family, who are fully aware of his lethal capacity. Now, only blood can quench the boogeyman's thirst for retribution. Number 2 The Devil's Advocate Kevin Lomax, a ruthless young Florida attorney who never lost a case, is recruited by the most powerful law firm in the world. In spite of his mother's disagreement, he accepts the offer and the money that comes along. But soon, his wife starts feeling homesick and seeing devilish apparitions. However, Kevin is sinking in his new cases and pays less and less attention to his wife. His boss and mentor, John Milton, seems to always know how to overcome every problem, and that just freaks out Kevin. Number 1 The Matrix Thomas A. Anderson is a man living to lives. By day, he is an average computer programmer and by night a hacker known as Neo. Neo has always questioned his reality, but the truth is far beyond his imagination. Neo finds himself targeted by the police when he is contacted by Morpheus, a legendary computer hacker branded a terrorist by the government. As a rebel against the machines, Neo must confront the agents, super powerful computer programs devoted to stopping Neo and the entire human rebellion.